What's going on everybody? Uh, I'm going to show you guys quick how to change your background color on a, on a simple photo and how to use the GIMP V3 plugin. So the first thing you're going to want to do is bring your image in again here. Grab the fuzzy select tool right up here and make sure that you have add to current selection selected anti-aliasing and feather edges. These are my settings. It's going to feather uh, one pixel, I guess. And then the threshold is seven. Now you can change these settings so you can select closer to the edges and whatnot. You know, you might get some complicated backgrounds where you're going to have to use the brush tool or whatnot to fine tune the edges. Sometimes the fuzzy select tool doesn't work all that great. Sometimes I'll resort to using Photoshop to remove a background because I'm just better in Photoshop. There's also online tools that you guys can use to remove the background. It'll actually change it white or it'll save it as a PNG. If it's saved as a, as a PNG and you bring it into GIMP, this this will be grayed out. It won't work because it has to start as a JPEG in RGB mode, image mode, RGB. Now, if you bring a PNG in, you can go over here, left click, and hit flatten image. If it says remove alpha channel, also do that. And then make sure your mode is RGB. If the plugin is still grayed out, then just take your image as is, go to File, Export As, and export it as a JPEG, okay? And then reopen your newly saved file, and it'll come in with a white background. Now, the plugin is still going to process that white background even though it's white. So, but it's going to make it a lot easier for you to, if you use an online tool, to, re, to recolor or copy the white background that's already white versus having to get the brush tool and go through all that nonsense if you don't have the patience for that. So let's pretend that we use the online converter and remove the busy background on this photo. And let's just pretend it's white. Okay, or right here, let's, let's just make it white quick. Okay, so if you use an online tool and remove the background and you save it as a JPEG or export it as a JPEG and bring it back in, this is what you'll have. But you're still going to have to copy this background and put it on a new layer over here. So, you see how easy that is? It's already white. So you just grab the fuzzy select tool and you basically just left click. And I'm holding the, the mouse button in right now and you can drag in words to tighten it around the edges. Once it's selected, you're going to go up to edit and you're going to copy your selection. Okay, now it's in the clipboard, so we're going to come come down here and we are going to add a new layer group, okay? And now we are going to press control V and you see it pasted our our background layer. So we just have the background layer there if we turn off our image. Now, a lot of people will go and run the plugin right now, but that's not going to work because you'll be running it, first of all, on your background layer. Second of all, it's still selected, so you're going to run it on the selection. So we are going to go up here and we're going to go to select and none, and that'll clear our selection around the image. And we are going to select our image layer over here again. And now we can run the plugin on it. Now don't go with with other processes like other scripts like Photoshop and maybe even GIMP V2 or V1. Uh, you first have to come in, go to image, scale image, and set your size and resolution. Well you don't want to do that on this one because you're going to do everything right here. So we're going to process this for tile, 
I recommend 600 DPI, but you can play around with the resolutions if you like. You can, some people go up to 1200, some people go to 800. And, uh, you know, sometimes if you have a crappy image, you might want to go to 333 DPI or whatnot. On wood, you know, same thing, keep your background white. White will not burn on wood, and when the, when this process in, inverts the photo, this will actually turn black, so it's not going to burn the background there. Okay. So then we are going to set our resolution, set our size, and then you're going to simply press OK on it. And it's going to go ahead and run the process on it here. My computer is a little slow, so just bear with me here. And voila, we're all done here. Just about. It's still running. That's how slow my computer is. Okay, now we're done. So now if you can see that the uh, the background here turned black for us, which is good. That's what we want because we're burning on black tile. So now you can come over here and you can flatten the image and make it all one, one layer. You don't have to do this, but if you're having a problem with GIMP crashing when you go to export it, go ahead and flatten your, your layers first, okay? Now we are going to export as I'll just name it tutorial two. My computer is this slow, yes. It's very very painful to sit here and deal with this stupid thing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, tutorial two dot JPEG. So now we are going to hit export. Now here on this next screen, when you first install GIMP and you first run the plugin, this is going to be set to 90. Make make sure it's 100, okay? And then go ahead and hit Save Defaults, and every time it'll it'll remember 100 quality, okay? So then hit Export, and our bar will zoom across there. All right. So now we're going to head over to Lightburn. I'm just going to go ahead and delete this, and we're going to import our Tutorial 2 photo that we just saved. Here it is. Okay, now, in this screen, it's showing the background white, okay, but it's, it's really not. It's inverted. So you can see that all that will burn is just the image itself. The background, see it's not coming over here burning the background. Okay, that's what you want. Now, the most important thing here, some of you might be having problems or whatnot saying, I can't get it looking right. Well, the problem is, is that your light burner is going to remember your last resolution. Okay. So you're going to come in here, you're going to put in your settings, don't mind these settings. For tile, I would probably be at, uh, let's say, 175 millimeters per second, and probably about 17% power or so. And now you can see that, that Lightbird remembered 200 DPI. Now that might be from your last photo that you did or whatnot. Or maybe you ever, never even knew this existed. In your resolution, you know, you got to have a line interval to match your resolution. So, in order to change this, because we can't change it right now, deactivate pass through mode right here. Change it to 600 DPI and it will give you a new line interval also. So, reactivate pass through, very important. Do not select negative image. You will not have to do this using. GIMP V3 tile or wood, 
you always leave this off. Okay. Now, if you're using Photoshop or something where it doesn't invert the photo for you, you'll go ahead and select negative image. And in Photoshop, you will color your background black. Okay. So, press OK, and you guys are you're good to go. Send it to your laser. And just work on work on your settings. Work on your machine settings because when you get your machine settings right, you're going to be able to make an awesome photo. Now, how do you know if your settings are right or not? I have an hour and 20 minute video in the announcements section titled My Workflow. And that will basically walk you through what I do on the machine to make sure I'm getting all the details. And here's how you know if you're getting all the details. You're going to go ahead and zoom all the way in, okay? And you can see all these little dots. Now, if you're not seeing, when the image starts out, if you're not seeing all these little dots with the space between them, you're, you're not, you're, you don't have the right machine settings or focus. Now, if all you see is white, okay, you have too much power. If all you see is black, you don't have enough power. Now, if you lower your power and you know, it starts to turn black on you, you know, it starts to fill in more, and you just still don't see the dots, then you got to slow your machine down to make sure your machine is firing fast enough to hit all these dots as it's going back and forth, okay? So uh, go ahead and watch that video, and you guys will learn quite a bit from it, so um, that's pretty much how to use V3 and how to bring it into Lightburn. It's uh, not too difficult once you guys know how to do it and then uh, all that is left is the machine settings and you guys will be making awesome photos like everybody else so thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions just let me know thanks